Ebenezer. That's how far God has brought us. Our group is almost 13 years old. In 2008, um, was a small group of Ghanaians who came together to form a Bible study group. And I remember uh, our first meeting was held in uh, a dimensions house. And notably among those who met at that time, uh, uh, the Menzies family, uh, the Brignes family, um, uh, the Terrier, uh, the Tosi Dome, Lucy's family, and others um, uh, whose name I may not remember, but they were all there at that time. And when we um, came together, uh, we saw that uh, this is something that will help us because one, uh, some people have even stopped going to church because they were not very comfortable with the, uh, the language and the, 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 the service, the mode of service. And so when we got that opportunity to meet, earlier on I knew there were meetings held in different houses uh, by those who were here before uh, I and some other people join uh, this group. But then um, the interest of the group was spared by the formation of PAGAF, which coincidentally happened at the same time. And the opportunity um, to visit some of our uh, sick people, at least uh, there was one lady who had come here at that time uh, he was sick, and one Sabbath afternoon we took opportunity to visit her and pray for and, and pray for her. And after singing Ghanaian hymns uh, and prayed for that lady, she told us she's never experienced anything like that for the past four years or so that he had been in the country. And others begin to question. Uh, why can't we do it? How can, why can't we take this feather? And so um, we were lucky. Uh, we came together and uh, we became a group and Dr. Boatin became our leader. We had a harvest. We raised 10,000 and eventually we got permission to worship in Chandler Church. Second phase is when we wrote a letter to formalize our group. And we wrote a letter to Pastor David Chen that we wanted to start a small group. And the group is not intended you know, to move away from Chandler SDA Church, but also just to help us you know, have at least one service in a month so that we can speak our language because there is nothing so good in using your own language to, you okay. know, using your own language for um, uh, service. And so we were granted that opportunity. So uh, once every month we will come together as a group. All our members from different churches will come and join us. And then we'll eat together. And then sometimes after that we'll go to the park and you know, play games, share literature to people that we know, invite, we, sometimes we invite people who are not Adventists to, to join our service. Our first service was held in 20, 2009 in April and Dr. Fojo was our speaker. And interestingly, he happens to be the president of PAGAF, uh, which is a group in the West Coast, um, similar to NASDA. At that time, it was at its infancy stage, and we, uh, as a group, even was we were the first to host PAGAF retreat in 2009, and that also gave some of our members a boost to, you know, um, people who have hitherto not wanted to be part of this group 
also came to be part of of us, uh, Dr. Uh, Tutu and others also became uh, part of the group. And after several um, weeks of worship in Chandler, uh, we thought that it would be necessary for us to move forward because our group was growing. A lot of people were, had come in. Our number was about 35. Our youth were energetic, very strong. We had a singing group of, of, for, um, formed by our youth and then another singing group um, uh, formed by the adult, Heavenly Jewels, a very powerful singing group. And so we wanted to actually move from that stage into at least uh, a group that can be recognized by the conference. So we wrote a letter to Chandler Pastor again that we wanted to be recognized as uh, Sabbath School branch and our mother church, if they would take us as our mother church. Um, it didn't resonate well because, and I don't blame him because earlier then, um, the Filipino church has been formed and all the members were from Chandler Church, so they have left. And then uh, the Korean church has also been formed and all of them were members of Chandler Church, they left. And for the Guinean group to leave also was going to create a lot of vacuum. And of course, some of us were leaders. I, was, I for instance, was an elder there. So for us to leave at that same time, it wasn't a good news to him. But we tried, we lingered on a little bit for about a year. And then at a point in time, we saw that uh, we have to at least move. Uh, so, finally, we, we, we got his support, and then we got a place to watch it. Chandler, uh, Tempe uh, Old School, uh, which, which was not being used, was given to us, and that is where the progress started. A company, Dr. Nana Jomo, or Foundation, or Ghana. And until the Edika, the coin, the Fanana Jomo Foundation, also, no, what they call Keta, a Volta region. Out of some of the videos, some of the Koya, do any buy, no, or Monam, a Possone, a sea, so, na fe, thanks to Sunsia, a that Volta region, or no. Now, one more didn't make Coco Drew, Crow, no, so na fe, a fancy, a chroma for no, and okay, can you need Gia, or Modi Genia Mano, now, ah, who can pay ye. Then you enter the book's name, a bag in Quania de Coo, your Tom Mo, your Tama, your dear Sitchery, and the Sanya Manning in Ia Day, a Kahu, the social. a doye e saidi e kanya me as them e the health du medie no so e support o ye na no and pictures ni videos omo the brain and o hin o kro mo kro ano bedwa no no ti mu bi we hye se adoye ka kre bi e be ye no impact no e so pa e yi e no nti se du medie no so e ba na wie ye ni e to so no so no ye de call jamasi school for the death and also here the first our conference no so and my pastor be the pastor ik kunedu our year conference no president no on any team in a call jamas school and i'm going to presentation no let you say any couple you did for bibi ka krebi and yame na mudum soa ube ye no what you say a kenya me sempa and until no a free one Yen timi ye biem why? Because pandemic ye day a strike ye. Inti niya mani a jiji e guho ni na ano e kadem. Nensu minim se 
e twenty ye ye nya e chesoa se tie bia kristo yesu maaye na dwuma ye be kosoa ye ne de bia eno nti maaye wasaf we mu ye gusu den 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 asoso so ye hwe ho nsa anya me dwuma no ye gusu den 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 ti mi wogidie se ye di adwuma no bebe wi ye e wo yesu din Oh, say, as if for yeah, it I can't say me says Sabbath crew, Sabbath crew, the heart of the church. Sabbath crew, ne a sore ne kuma. Sans say, Hona ye ba ye ba by trust simu, who be bitcher wag me a witty me be sa. And she Sabbath crew, that saw no kuma, so party wherever we go, no. Say, her cry, baby, I bet ya saw no, we start from branch Sabbath school. And she, luckily, no. Yes, started and finished as well. I was the first superintendent when we had one month service. And I had the bar, and on the end, you know, the energy of the Sabbath school, you know, a pencil, pencil, Bible, you know. So I said, divine service, no question. But Sabbath school, you know, 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 Ye be ankarigi na nyame adom ene ne yakodro no ekọ na ni mu yi ama so no etu mpon pa myself nana kunedi mary irene and uh, ruby we used to meet in my place and uh, it was just a hang i mean hanging out but we decided to use the occasion to learn some song so as a result of that, we formed a small group, a small singing group, which initially was called Faith for Today. And we were using that group to also help to organize our, our worship. And most of the time, this group will meet when the church meets in the uh, Chandler Church. Ebenezer, that's how far God has brought us. Um, near war, a cool, a room, him, a normal tattoo drum, a warrior in Sabbath school, harmonious, um, group, and I a war heavenly jewels. Now, how many cry a harmony fast so by a year, doctor Irene Usu Wedi, a bishra neba, and then we are nominated now for a kind of boom, and I a former harmony book with a tattoo drum. Now, sad and now we are near whom we say a young to four be brave or jewels, no, a be or harmony, no, a being so your church members. Ah, you bet me a form me choir. Now, sir, idea he came from Dr. Irene Usbuad in Mrs. Alice Dustin or more boy, may a kind of who boom, Mrs. Gifty a queer consul, so a becan home, a moon in our boy will be at their honkaka. I fear your channel, not any professionals, dear, but oh, yeah, dear, will be a year, you bet me. A fee, a free horn, a transition call, Elder JT of a boy. Now, a fee 2017, in your power, me say, choir leader for Finnish Ghana SDA Church Choir. Now, a new moon, na I in Dr. J. Treme, and so by, and on so by the boy. Now, in your ASU students, and so by, or more so by the boy, Emma, and this is how far you get quite a bit through. And then you have a point, you in him saying, You are no more bois or mama, quietly do in a in him say, I told your man, near Kyle Moon, I had in your miasse, saying, I may be a bedroom and pencil at the same. So I've been an elder for I think three consecutive years, and at most of the time it was a family of five, constant family of five, and each family comprised about husband, wife, and two or three children. But I noticed the church growth when we first got our first ASU student, Andrew Barton, when he came in, and I think through him, he was able to convince other students in his former school, Kwame Nkrumah University School of Technology, to apply for a scholarship to come to ASU. So as the number of Ghanaians increased in ASU, which thankfully there were more Seventh-day Adventists, they were able to join the church, and uh, that was the beginning of the growth. And also, we had uh, some older family to relocating from Ghana here. It started with uh, Pastor Dako and his family, and then it was followed by Jesse B and his family. 
and that's how the church started growing and therefore we got a lot of experience and one more thing Dr. Nate relocating from Dallas to Arizona also helped especially with the choir and we finally got an organized choir that was making the church very interesting. As we were planning, one of the things that became a problem in our church as our numbers were growing was a place to worship. Um, our building was so small and at a point in time uh, we were almost outnumbered the capacity of the, uh, of the room. And of course, if uh, any inspection had been conducted at that time, they would probably have closed the church. And so we were thinking uh, in a way to find a way to, to get a place to worship. And um, it, was a, it was a problem, you know, we tried some places, we didn't have enough money to do it. Uh, it was more expensive, uh, but we saw that it, we, I mean, it was um, one of our major needs at that time because we go to church, the room is full, uh, and with Arizona heat, you know, sometimes it's unbearable. But God is so wonderful. At that time, the church had saved almost $80,000. But that wasn't even sufficient with all the prices that we were getting. Eventually, one day, Dr. Usudomi called me and said, he was the guy, he was the person that I was always working with, and Dabuchi, may he still rest in peace, working with to find a place to worship. So the, the, at Tempe, we know we had a place which was very, you know, it was given to us for a, a token. We were not paying much, but if you, anybody who visited the place, found it was a very small, crummy place and old and lots of challenges in the building. Uh, air conditioners would not work well but at the end of the month you got huge bills because the, there were leakages and all that that could never be fixed because the building was so old. Um, the, the fiscal appearance of the place and all that too, you know, it was such that uh, sometimes it was difficult to even invite a friend to, to join in because I didn't, uh, uh, even though we were doing our best to worship, they didn't uh, feel like it, it, uh, uh, it was uh, something befitting to, you know, our name and our God that we were worshiping. So we kept looking and looking and looking at uh, uh, a few of the elders, uh, well, the Butri, myself, uh, the Kuoko, and a few, uh, you know, other people. We, whenever we saw something come on the market or we passed by a place with a sign, uh, we would bring it to the attention of members and we would, you know, troop there to go and see if it was something we could afford. Uh, we tried a few places. Um, uh, there was one that we came very close to getting, but then uh, because of the kind of complex nature of the process through the conference, we lost that uh, opportunity. Another church bought it. So when this one came, we searched and this one came on the market. Uh, at that time, uh, through uh, you know, uh, the generous giving of the church members, uh, Titan, uh, not Titan, the offerings, pledges, um, harvest and all that, we had built up a sizable amount of uh, down payment. Uh, so when this came up and we found it and we spoke to the conference through our coordinator at the time, uh, they came to inspect it and then uh, they, uh, as soon as they saw this place, they told us don't even ask for you know, a reduction in the price because there were many other people who were trying to buy this building. So they said just go ahead and give them the asking price. Uh, we told them, you know, our, our, we had money, but it wasn't enough to meet the, you know, the down payment that they required and all that. So uh, they gave us, and we promised them that we would raise, you know, we would raise more money through uh, uh, the harvest and all that if they would give us the, you know, the backup. So that's exactly what we did. Within a week or two, we members were generous. We raised a lot of money. 
and the conference gave us uh, something in addition and that's how we were able to uh, put the big money. Eventually, we were able to acquire this building that you see today. Uh, we would like to thank the conference for their support, church members for that spirit of giving. Without them, we couldn't have, you know, uh, bought it. I think the future of this church, it depends on the leadership here. Uh, because one of the critical things that you have to look at as an as immigrant church is that what would happen when the adults are no longer here? Are we going to rely on new immigrants coming in from Ghana to refill the, uh, the pews? Or are we growing our own kids to continue after us? The question is that if that's the case, what form is it going to take? Things such as language, things such as how we organize church, things how, uh, how we conduct church, uh, things how, as we relate to the community. What are the, the focus that we're going to have beyond the first generation? Because if we are not careful and think about it, integrate these young people so that they are prepared to take over, then I'm sorry, we may run into the problem that other immigrant churches have had over the history of the United States, where the church starts vibrant with the community, and then when the first generation disappears, the church building now is empty because the children did not feel that they were part of the church. If they look at it, it's their parents' church, not their church. And so our goal is to make sure that there's a church for our kids also. So that they will continue to do